So following the introduction, we'll start discussing the actual synthesis flow. And as you see here on the right side of our screen, we have this flow chart of uh, this, the different steps in synthesis that we presented before. We'll start going through them and we'll have this little chart um, escorting us throughout these two lectures, uh, pointing out which step we're on, just to remember where we are. So we'll start with compilation or syntax analysis. This is a kind of a short uh, little step here, but I just want to mention the, this fact about compilation and the synthesis flow. So before we start to synthesize, we need to check the syntax for correctness, and that is what we call compilation. Um, however, we're talking about a synthesizer, not a compiler. Generally, when we talk about a compiler in a regular uh, programming language, in a sequential programming language, what we do is we recognize all the possible constructs in a formally defined program language. We translate them to a machine language represent, representation of execution process. So we have all kinds of instructions that our processor can uh, carry out. And what we do is we take our higher level uh, language, we um, turn it into uh, assemb uh, assembly code, and then we use an assembler to turn it into a machine language. That's basically what a compiler does. That's very different than what a synthesizer does. A synthesizer, it recognizes a target-dependent subset of a hardware description language, so it can only recognize RTL constructs if we use all kinds of initial blocks and so forth. They're unsynthesizable. Then it maps them to a collection of concrete hardware resources. These are our standard cells. We actually turn what we wrote in our hardware description language to actual hardware, and this is an iterative tool in the design flow. So whereas a compiler took our sequential language and turned it into sequential instructions that are fed into the um, into the processor. What synthesis does, it takes our same type of uh, language, but instead of turning it into sequential instructions, it turns it into actual hardware blocks. Um, I just want to point out that we can use our uh, incisive tool to compile. It's actually a part of the incisive tool uh, that's uh, called ncverilog. And to just compile and not run a simulation, we can write ncverilog and then the, the file name. This will help us easily run compilation and point us to syntax errors that we can get rid of. Um, alternatively, we can use the irun minus compile, and that will also help us do that.